Hello, I'm Pastor Greg Anderson from Our Savior Lutheran Church in Edmonton, and I'm going to br I'm bringing you um, this time of devotion. We uh, are going through the uh, Sunday morning readings from Hebrews, uh, a book that I don't think we spent a lot of time in. Uh, it's a book uh, whose author we're unclear of. It used to be held that uh, it was Paul who was the author. Uh, it's interesting that the reason they don't think it's Paul uh, is that the language is too clean and crisp. <laughs> uh, Paul had a tendency to dictate his letters, and they were very energetic. Um, and the uh, uh, the language um, in this case, you know, the Greek that it was written in, um, was um, had a lot of flair and had a lot of kind of energy to it. Um, Hebrews is written in clear, concise, really, really pretty Greek. Uh, that people think is probably unlike, <laughs> unlike Paul, whichever. Um, it, the, um, the theme of Hebrews is, uh, uh, or the readings that we're going to have really about who is Jesus, particularly how is Jesus the Messiah? How does that work? Um, uh, Messiah is not something we expect. It's, it's, we use Christ much more often than we use Messiah. Uh, but for centuries and millennia, the Jews were awaiting the Messiah. Uh, and th in those years of expectation, um, a lot of hopes and dreams were attached to the coming of the Messiah. And so um, how did Christ you know, fill that out? How did Jesus fill that out? And one of the issues, of course, with his own followers were that he seemed unlike the Messiah they were hoping for. Um, in particular, he became a suffering Messiah, and that really wasn't what they were hoping for. So Hebrews is trying to literally kind of flesh out uh, who Jesus uh, was as the Messiah. Today, the reading is going to be from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before God, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who, in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, I've got something that, that is both reassuring and kind of terrifying to share with you, and that is... Um, um, Jesus, God, uh, knows everything you've ever thought, uh, ever believed, ever considered, ever done, and ever said. Everything. God knows everything. Even those things that we think, oh, hopefully God missed that. Hopefully it was busy in heaven and God didn't notice that. Um, no, <laughs> God doesn't miss anything. Uh, you know, God knows everything. And that's terrifying, of course, because we're not always proud of the things we think, uh, of the things we say, of the things we consider, uh, of the things that we do. Um, not all of that um, are sources of pride for us. They are um, difficult. They're difficult. We're human. We're people. And um, as I am off to say, you know, people are going to people. Uh, we just are. Um, and so um, there it is. God knows everything. Now, it doesn't have to be only terrifying. Um, you know, we certainly, we have confession. We have confession at the beginning of our services of worship. We have prayers of confession that are open to us. We can go to God and say, wow, not a good day, uh, not a good moment for me. Um, Luther talked about starting each morning, uh, waking up and declaring, I am baptized. And in a sacramental sense, that means it's a new day. Um, I am washed clean uh, by, the blood of, uh, by the blood of the Lamb, and I have a new day before me. 
uh, my slate is clean and uh, here I go into the day and may God give me the grace to do better. Uh, none of us are going to be perfect. That's just not an option. Um, so better. Um, and, you know, trying to keep our intent uh, pure. The reassuring part, though, is that uh, Scripture is also clear, not only that God knows everything, 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 <laughs> uh, but God is forgiving and forgetting. Um, it, it's an odd idea. We think that, uh, you know, this picture is that we go to heaven and we get to the pearly gates, which always mystifies me. Why is heaven a gated community? Uh, but it's how we how it's pictured, right? We get to the gate, and um, the picture is that St. Peter is there. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's some uh, accounting that has to occur before we're allowed in to get our uh, wings and our harp. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, we have this picture, I think, that, you know, Peter opens up the big book uh, and comes to our page, and there's um, a listing of everything we've done and, you know, He's had to write in the margins and along the edges of the paper because we've done uh, so much to offend God. Um, I, I blame my compatriots on that, other clergy um, who have uh, who have given that message and filled so many of us. And I say us, my childhood pastor certainly did that to me, uh, that uh, we, boy, we're in deep trouble uh, and we better, um, you know, we better watch ourselves. Because God follows us, follows us around like a big mallet, um, you know, to pop us if we're uh, if we're bad, um, and it's a terrible way to live. And I don't think it's the way God intended intends us to live. I think what happens is, you know, we go um, much like the prodigal son. We go before God. We've got our speech prepared. Oh God, I've sinned against you know against you and um, against my neighbor. I'm not worthy to be called your child and. Um, but like the prodigal father, the forgiving father, uh, God says, uh, what? <laughs> uh, the father of the prodigal son story interrupts his son and says, we're going to have a party. It's, I'm so happy you're home. Uh, I think, you know, I, I believe the way I read scripture, God looks at the big book. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's really a big book, but okay. Uh, it helps us to picture our page. And when God looks at our page for the offenses that we're confessing, uh, God looks at us mystified and says, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, it's empty. Your, your page of offenses is empty because God forgives and forgets. And in part, because of the death of Jesus, we are forgiven completely. Um, God forgives and forgets. Uh, you know, otherwise we have this picture of God who forgives and then, but you know that God always has in the back of God's mind what we've done. Uh, I, I just don't believe it works like that. I don't think God um, holds those kinds of grudges against us. I think when God forgives us, God forgives. Uh, much like Jesus healings, uh, when he heals, he heals completely. Uh, when he forgives, he forgives completely. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you forgive us. You forgive us completely and that we can approach your throne with boldness, not trepidation, not fear that you're, you've got that one sin that was so horrible that we believe you're, you're unable to forgive it and then forget it completely. Uh, but no, the book of Hebrews you know, tells us that we should approach your throne with boldness um, because what we find there is mercy. We find grace um, and that we can never out sin your mercy. And so thank you for that. <laughs> we appreciate that. We're not always proud of what we've done, but we thank you for your forgiveness and a clean slate um, each day. And now we remember before you those words that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing this time of devotion with me, and I hope you have a blessed rest of the day.